Dino Dave here. I am at a site that I first found, oh my gosh, 30 years ago? Don't say that. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. I am just coming back here to check. Maybe I'll see a little bit of erosion. Maybe something else is poking up from a T-Rex. I wish I could say I found more. I wish I could say I found a skull, but right now, this is the most complete T-Rex I have ever found. See that there in that sandstone? That would be tough to get out. Look good in someone's garden, actually. Can't do it though, this land is protected. There, and more of this sandstone is its vertebrae. I mean, there's more pieces here. I was hoping maybe, by luck, I would find something else exposed. I don't see nothing though. And here is a few more pieces. Now, if somebody were to be very ambitious and dig this up, maybe they'll find more. But uh, that's how you find a T-Rex in the wild. It looks like that. It doesn't look all pretty like you would in the museum. So that's it. That is the most complete T-Rex I have ever found. At least that I know of. It's quite hard to convey <laughs> the feelings that one, one has. And you know what? I don't know if I even want to find... Well, I do want to find a complete T-Rex. Who am I kidding? It's a lot of work. They're a big animal. I'll take it. I can't tell you how excited I am right now. What are my favorite dinosaurs? Number three in my lifetime, the third Pachycephalosaurus dome, the bonehead dinosaur. These dinosaurs are so freaking cool, but they're kind of hard to find. And I just found another one. The Pachycephalosaurus, the bone-headed dinosaur, one of my favorite dinosaurs. It says here 30 different specimens have been found, but only 30. Did I find 10% of them? I doubt it. I think the number is a little bit higher than that. But I did find three more than I thought I would. Well, I might have to say two and a half. Here's my friend Jim Hornstein. He first found the spike to a skull. I went to look for the rest of it, I couldn't find it. So I checked back a year later, and what do you know, they're laying on the ground. It rolled down from the hill was the rest of this skull. Speaking of rolling heads, check out the second bonehead skull I found. The most impressive. And now we get to my third Pachydome. Right there is a Pachycephalosaurus dome. Now a little trick to dinosaur hunting, they kind of get caught in those streams. So you can see this Pachy head floated down in this channel bed, got caught in this current, just like those rocks there. And uh, if you look for these channel beds, it's a good place to find dinosaur bones also. And now for the good news, a year later, this pachydome was rescued by Kerry Woodruff, paleontologist, and all three of my pachydomes that I found are now safely resided inside a museum. And what's even cooler than that, this last dome that I found raised over a thousand dollars for Glendive's local cancer fund. How cool is that? I have never seen a bone in this pristine condition in the Hill Creek Formation before. There she is. Where? Okay, I don't know if you can see this right here. There's a vertebrae right here. There's a vertebrae right here. Looks like we got a rib right here. And, here. and there's the, the beautiful Ed Montessor femur. So I think, I think we have a skeleton here. I think if we set up a crew, we could dig up a, a Montessor dinosaur right here and it could be a good condition. That is scary. Number three on the list was this Triceratops jaw. Oh, but wait, there was much more to it. Check this out. Long before there were any such thing as Dino Dave videos, I found this Triceratops jaw. And I thought that's all I'd find, but look what's directly underneath it. Boy, did I get lucky. 
It is a huge scapula. Now, because we found the scapula with the jaw, that was important. Because when you, when you are out dinosaur hunting, you, you usually find a skull or a body. I see him! Rarely do you find the whole skull and the body together because when an animal dies in the river, usually the, one of the weakest joints is the joint that connects the head from the rest of the body. So usually the head is the first to go drifting downstream. So it is hard to find dinosaurs with the skull and the body together. Now, because I found the jaw with the scapula, we knew that there is probably more of this dinosaur here. So then the Museum of the Rockies came out and set up an excavation to get the rest of this Triceratops. And sure enough, we found some horns, a shield, a couple vertebrae, and a few more things. I wish it was more, but still, this was a very cool Triceratops to dig up. <laughs> This here is a little thing called the Mononychus. This is the most complete Mononychus of North America ever found in the, in the history of the world. No way! Yes way! It shatters it. The most anybody's found in North America was about two or three bones. So, and this is a copy of it. But this is the most complete. I mean, this would make news. And uh, who found it? I found it. Don't act like you're not impressed. The problem is, is that the landowner took it back. So like, no, God! So now they cannot publish it because in order to science to publish it, they have to have it in their own in museums, but just the cast does not take, they have to have the original specimens to publish it. That ain't right. I'm still working on trying to get it, if that ever happens, but at least we have the cast, and at least we know it's there. I was so excited when I found this. Vertebrae all over, mononychus, it means one claw, they think is a little chicken-like bird that uh, dug up uh, ter termites. They find a lot of these in Mongolia, I talked about Mongolia and how they find complete stuff in Mongolia, but as far as here in North America, this is actually really amazing. I just found a dinosaur. I found a theropod. I ain't kidding. This thing is rare. These things are rare and it's up there. Where to go get it? No question. Number one, this is the best dinosaur I've ever found. I've made Newsweek already. The Seattle Times, the chicken from hell, Anzu Wiley. In fact, they didn't even know this existed until 2014. I can only get to this place by boat. And after a few hangups, I am now gonna show you the exact moment I found the chicken from hell. <laughs> this has got me shaking. But that is exciting. That is a meat-eating dinosaur right there. And they're hard to find. Like this, this shaley type of bone, their bones were hollow just like birds. So there's a whole dinosaur here. So there you go. And it would actually take me three more years before we could get all permissions, permits, and for me to find a nice crew that I could be a part of to dig this out. And look at this claw. No wonder they call it the chicken from hell. Check out all these beautiful bones that are already prepared back at the museum. So there you go. That's my top six best finds. And you know what the best part is? We haven't even found all of the chicken from hell yet. We're still digging this summer, so there could be more. And you know the other best part is? <laughs> this GPS has a lot of coordinates of a lot of finds that I am just waiting to get permission yet. So. We're gonna get a lot more finds. This is just my top six yet. And the whole reason this has been a, such a success is because of your support, likes. And I have to tell you, especially you Glendivians, thank you for all the love. This has been a good ride. I hope to get another top six for you in another couple years.